Created and directed by Raj and DK, Guns and Gulab starring Raj Kumar Rao, Dulga Salman and Gulshan Devaya in the lead roles is finally released on Netflix. As the dark comedy show releases on the streaming platform, we thought this would be the perfect time to talk about Gulshan Devaya's menacing portrayal of Charkat Atmaram in detail and discuss why his character left a strong impression on our minds. A spoiler warning is in order as we will be discussing essential plot points and character details from the show. So if you haven't been able to catch up with the series yet, maybe you should pause the video and get back to watching it on Netflix. But if you are done watching it already, kindly follow us through this video. And yeah, while you're at it, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. It helps us a lot. Thank you and let's move on. Creators Raj and DK have incorporated enough retro nostalgia in the show which is set in the made of town of Gulabganj to stand out from the other crime dramas available on Indian OTT platforms. This series is being marketed as a gangster comedy by the creators. According to Ormax Media, the most watched Indian television series was Raj and DK's previous program Fuzzy. The audience are still waiting for the release of The Family Man's third season, but before they return with the fan favorite NIA agent Shri Kantiwari, the creators take us on an entirely different journey on an entirely different platform into a world filled with foul play, betrayal and violence. We were never disappointed by the makers with their writing prowess and this show is gladly no different. The writer-director duo along with their frequent collaborators Sumit Arora created some interesting characters that are shady, three-dimensional yet simple at the same time. The story revolves around four central characters, one of them is Tipu played by Rajkumar Rao, a mechanic and the son of an infamous criminal who is sucked into the world of crime for circumstances and becomes famous for killing two men with a spanner, which gets him the moniker Pana Tipu. Then we have Arjun, an honest cop who is mixed quite well into this small town drama surrounding a drug deal. Adash Gaurav who plays Chota Ganchi or Jugnu, the son of an infamous drug dealer and is trying everything to get on the good books of his father by completing his wishes. And finally Gulshan Devaya plays Atmaram who is presented as a ruthless assassin with semi-supernatural powers who stops at nothing to achieve his goals even if he is this close to getting his ball shot off. The portrayals of the characters are equivalent to how the Quinn brothers mythologize their protagonists, especially the dimwits, stuck inside a mysterious plot that they are in no shape of getting out safely from. I love the performance of Rajkumar Rao as a scaredly accidental gangster and the performance of Dulga Salman as a righteous but at the same time flexible cop. But what astounded me was the performance of Gulshan Devaya and the writing around his character Charkad Atmara. His character is probably derived from Anton Shigar from No Country for Old Men as Raj and DK are known to be fans of the Coen brothers and they typically adapted the dark comedy genre for which the director duo are notorious. Like Anton, Atmaram's character is derived from a cat in this cat and mouse chase between him and Tipu. Despite having seven lives, he is also shown to be wearing a tiger's claw from another miracle man, displaying his affinity towards religious sentiments. His eyes glimmer like a cat's as well and he is completely self-centered and likes to indulge his time in stupid games like a cat. For example, he can be seen hanging up the call exactly at 59 seconds every time he talks with his partner. His mostly expressionless face and the affinity to break out in laughter successfully generates some goose flesh moments. Atmara means the one who is the lord of his own soul and the Charkat assassin seems to be invincible exactly as his name suggests. He is portrayed as the devil reincarnate who is seemingly invincible as long as his lifeline does not run out. He is stabbed, shot at and crushed multiple times but he never loses his stamina or powers. In the beginning of the show, he receives a pendant from a street astrologer which purportedly saved his life from his one true enemy Pana Tipu. He is the one who killed Tipu's father Babu Tiger and his friend Sunil which affects Tipu the most and since then he is looking for a chance to kill the Supari killer. By the end of the series, we'll learn about the secret behind Atmaram's secret powers. A fortune teller foresaw that he will have seven lives and he won't die until all of his lifelines are over. At first, he thought of the prophecy to be bogus, but when he survives from a well in which his father threw him in, he quickly understood that he is invincible for at least seven deadly attempts. After being saved, the first thing he did was kill his father. After the prediction about his life has thus far come true, he develops into a superstitious human being. His luck improves after he purchases a pendant from a street vendor. Tipu, the person Atmaram is trying to get killed, keeps eluding him and nearly kills him once. Atmaram then returns to the same peddler and purchases a new pendant after killing his angry boss Nabi. And just like that, he receives a job offer from Thiraj shortly after purchasing another pendant. Atmaram believes that fortune is once more on his side, but Tipu triumphs over him in the end. 
Despite several fatal attempts, Tipu fails to put a stop to Atmaram, but in the end, Tipu manages to put a bullet into his body using the gun of his father. But it did not kill him though, and he is seen picking up his knife, which is a testament to his ever vigilant character. We also see something similar at the end of No Country for Old Men as Anton Sugar walks out in a deadly steed from a desperate face off with uneven odds, and it is not clear whether his enemy is finished or not, exactly as we are not sure if Tipu is dead after receiving three fatal blows from the monster's asset. This ambiguity makes his character even more interesting and menacing, and his incomplete arc probably hints at the chance of a sequel of this brilliant series. The series is delicious. From the writing to the performances, everything is perfect. Every single small joke gets paid off by the end of the series, which is incorporated into the screenplay quite seamlessly. The making of the series is different as it resembles a film more than a show. The comedy is organic and extremely funny. It never comes across as out of place. The screenplay is aptly distributed and it successfully gives us an edge of the seat experience throughout its runtime. The show is extremely binge-worthy and it is a really fresh addition to Netflix's content library after a really long time. In recent times, Netflix's Indian contents are getting more and more interesting and I really hope that the streaming giant manages to hold on to this hit straight. Hey hey hey, thank you for watching this video. Do share your thoughts in the comment section about your experience of watching Guns and Gulabs on Netflix. Hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to get your weekly dose of cinema and series. See you on the next one and for the time being we are signing off. अच्छा चलता हूँ इस पूरी स्टोरी का पॉइंट क्या है एंड आल बी